Hey guys, this is Magnus Hoogsvur from Mirur with a tutorial on how to create a custom shaped grill in NX. Now as an example we will be demonstrating this technique on a microphone concept, but it is a technique that has a lot more flexibility than just working on microphones. <clears throat> So with that said, I will assume you know a little bit about Freeform CAD, then particularly how NURBS work and basic modeling techniques. And if you're unfamiliar about NURBS and their functionality, I can recommend that you see my previous tutorials about making realistic welds using NX and KeyShot. The first thing I want to show here is a parametrically controlled grill template that I'm using when making any custom shaped grill. I won't be going into details on how exactly this is made as, uh, as that would be an entirely different tutorial, but I am giving this template away to whomever might see a, a use for it. So just follow the download link that should pop up here to get a hold of it. Now I'm attaching a NX part file and a step part file to this uh, download, but keep in mind that the parameters and the NX file will only work if you are using NX 12 or a newer version than that. So then, let's jump into our case of our microphone concepts. Now making a grill such as this, especially if it's a large grill with a funky shape or whatever, uh, might have a slight impact on your performance. So it is usually one of the last things I add to a concept. However, if you work in an assembly context, uh, as I do here, it should be a simple task just to turn them on and off as you go if you feel like your system is somehow slowed down. As of right now, I got three mics, two of which I've modeled with the, where I modeled the grills with using this technique. And it's worth noting that I've separated the grill into two pieces on each microphone, which is the lower and the upper part. And usually you would want to separate the grills as much as possible to avoid deforming the tubes too much during the shaping process. Now let's jump into concept two here to create our top grill. Now the surface model on top here acts as a uh, placeholder for the grill and we will use it to shape the flat pattern I showed you earlier. As of right now, there's nothing more fancy going on here than a simple curve which is revolved around the z-axis. Now I'm going to bring my grill template into this assembly and if you're using, and if you're using NX you might experience that nothing seems to happen when you add the template, but that's simply because I've removed all the geometry from a model reference. In other words, I've made the flat grid invisible in context of the assembly since it will not directly take part of our final model. Now it doesn't matter where we position this flat pattern, so we just place it at a default location and double click it in your part navigator to activate it. Now I want to use Wave Geometry Linker to add the placeholder geometry into the grill template. Once I've done that, I'll just save this as a new file so I don't mess up the existing template. So as of right now, I've added a placeholder geometry into the grill file. I can open this in a new window as the rest of the geometry is of no use for me at this point. Now the plan here is to use a tool called Global Shaping to transfer our grill, our flat grill shape from the existing planner surface to our placeholder shape.
but if we try to use this as it is right now, we would get somewhat strange result and the expected uh, grill looks more like some funky noodles. So we must do some more preparations to our placeholder shape before it can be pulled off properly. Now the reason that this happens has all about to do with the nature of the nerves of our placeholder surface. Now both of these faces are currently analytical surfaces. So I can't use show poles to see how they are distributed simply because they are simply because they are analytically defined at the moment. However, if I use X form, I can see how each surface gets their nerves distributed. So our top surface is a revolved face, and that's the reason why we get those noodleish shapes as it tries to transfer a pattern from a rectangular shape to a revolved shape. So if we were to unwrap this revolved shape, uh, we would have a hard time making it rectangular. So we must try to recreate our top shape and have a rectangularly distributed NURBS mesh to correctly transfer the pattern. If this seem a little confusing at this stage, I'm sure it will seem a little clearer in a moment when we get a little further in down the process. Now since our flat pattern will take shape on top of the surface, we must first take into account the grill thickness, which is roughly about one millimeter thick. So you can just use any offset surface tool you prefer. Uh, in this case, I'll be using the synchronous tool offset region. Now we do a little unconventional trick, which is to extract a facet body from our placeholder shape. And you will see in a little second why I'm doing just that. Now I want you to find your fill surface tool and select the edge of our placeholder face. Now here comes the trick. In the drop down menu of fill surface, select the fit to facet and select the freshly created facet body. This prompts the fill surface to be shaped along the facet body. Now, if you're dealing with a big mesh, you probably want to reduce the attraction here to, to pull it off. But for small meshes such as this, 100% on each slider usually works just fine. So let me just hide our facet and our placeholder mesh and focus only on our fill surface. Now the beauty here is that the fill surface work in such a way that it always generates a rectangular NURBS mesh and simultaneously trims it towards our boundary. So when we use our show poles tool here, we can see that we have indeed a rectangular mesh, which will be perfect for our global shaping situation. So let's finally bring up our global shaping tool and get on to the final part. I'll just reset this window so you'll see the default setting for this tool. And first we select by surface in the top drop down menu. The way this works is to first select which geometry that is to be shaped. In our case, that would be our cubes. Now I won't select all at once because it will take a little time to map them out. So I'm just picking a few first to test it. Next up, it asks for a base surface. Now this would be our reference shape for our subject or uh, the initial shape of our subject. This could easily be in any shape at all, but it's obviously simpler to predict the change of our subject that is to be deformed if the base surface has a shape as close to the subject's shape as possible. Next, we select the new shape of our subject, which would be the fill surface we just made. You might notice that the default setting makes the geometry deform on the side, so it looks a little flat. But just select normal to control surface in the deformation direction to counteract that. You also, you also might end up with the subject being inside of our 
uh, control surface, but that's all a matter of clicking reverse direction, if that's the case. Now we seem like we have defined it correctly, so I'll select the rest of our tubes and click uh, apply or OK. So if you take a look at the NURBS distribution compared to our newly created grill, you can see that the NURBS distribution is the key to correctly shaping the grill. So at this stage it's only a matter of trimming away the excess geometry and go back to our assembly. Now you might experience in the context of an annex assembly that uh, the grill is gone, but that's a simple of adding it back to the uh, model reference set to, to make it visible. If you want to have a closer look at the model itself, I'm also attaching a step file of the ready-made microphone. 